Hi, my name is Darren with Light Catch, and our mission is to give every mobile phone user in the world the ability to stop crime. So today I wanted to make a comparison between social media, the theft net site that we have for Grand Prairie on Facebook, and the application that we have that's 75% completed. Social media, people have had returned item, or stolen items returned to them through posting and asking for help. One of the biggest concerns with social media is that if uh, the wrong person is caught, they can come back and start to look for revenge. So it's not private. You are exposed to that. It's, it's not secure. You're also exposed to criticisms of the victim. Uh, we've seen that happen a lot. And people jumping to the wrong conclusions. If you're trying to manage a very active post and people aren't understanding what's happening, it can be a real difficult thing to uh, keep everybody on the same page. When you get a lot of feedback on a post and you're not certain of the sources and you get conflicting information, it can be very unclear what's real and what's worth actioning. Uh, but it can work. And most often, one of the things with social media is that it's used to make connections, it's used to update in communities, but it's not often treated as a real-time emergency. So people often are prone to checking it at night after work or checking it uh, when they uh, on Saturdays. Now, if I compare that to Thefnet, the site that we use, Thefnet Grand Prairie, because we man that site, we're often on it from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. We can help anyone that's been a victim of crime post or comment confidentially. And that will help keep everybody in the community safe from prying eyes. Uh, the other thing that we do is we manage the comments. We don't support uh, unsubstantiated criticisms to the victim or to the police. We, we think that's not the time or the place for that. And so we, we will often manage those comments. Uh, because the admin is active and we know best practices, we'll often help the, the poster with a map. So everybody that is a victim might know where 98th Street and 106th Ave is, but if you don't live there, you might not know the area. And that can be very confusing for people that glance at it and just have a short period of time to, to help out. And when we start to know sources and we start to know hot spots and, and uh, we get confirmations privately, it helps our information on DefNet become very accurate. And uh, I'm happy to say that we've had over 300,000 of insurance claims avoided because of vehicles and bicycles and items that were stolen returned back to the victims within our first eight months of operating. But if I compare that to the app that we have almost completed, like Catch, there's some big differences. So the one thing about like Catch is that whether you are a victim of a crime or whether you want to help out someone in the community, it's not only free, but it's 100% confidential. Only the operations center will know where the crime actually took place and who actually posted the data. If we do put that information on a map, especially the victim, it's approximately where the crime happened. So people are not exposed in, in, un, to unsafe conditions. Then. Um, we don't just show a map like Google Maps or Uber, but we'll also show the last known, known location of the suspect and where you are relative to that location. So if you're a block away, you can take immediate action. If you're five miles away, you can kind of keep on the lookout. And this, we think, will take stopping crime to a whole nother level when you let every neighbor and every coworker for free that's within a block of you know something just took place, I mean, the results can be so powerful. And on top of that, when you get alerts from a dedicated app, um, it's not going to be uh, relationship updates, connections updates, um, I'm going to say puppy updates, not, not disrespect to, to puppies, but 
it's easy to prioritize if it's coming in we're going to send it it's not suspicious information or we think you should watch out for this it's this happened now you can make a difference right now we need your help and we think that that's going to make another very great difference to uh, like catch app users so if you're not uh, if you're not familiar with our crowdsourcing campaign we do have a campaign through ATB Booster. You can go to that campaign at www.bit.ly forward slash lightcatch. We would love to have every member, 7,000, give a small measure of support, maybe $25, maybe 50. But even if just 900 of our 7,000 members made a contribution of $25, we could get that Android app out to you within four weeks. So we think that because it's free, that's something that uh, everybody could help make a difference on. And we're really excited to showing it to the community and showing the results. So please go to www.bit.ly forward slash lightcatch, share it, uh, support it, and we'll make sure every penny goes to the development of the app. Yeah, that was good, Darren. What about Ron's comment about, uh, um, that, or, he made a comment about posting live on the site and, and, and being applicable and stuff like that. Weren't you going to touch on that? Yeah, gotcha. So let me... So here's one of the number one reasons why we don't allow suspicious activity to be posted on our site because suspicious activity, the volume of that is many, many times over the volume of real crime. And so what happens is that people after a while just tune out. And there's a measure of our members, whether they're stay-at-home moms or they're people that work at night they really just don't want to know every single crackhead, every single uh, wheelbarrow, every single trouble that's all over the city. It's overwhelming and they can't help it. So it gets depressing. But that's not the real reason. Here's the real reason is people tune it out after a while. So let me give you an example. On August 18th at 3 p.m., just north of Claremont, a vehicle was stolen. And that vehicle was posted to our site at 3.12 p.m., within 15 minutes of it being stolen, we believe. That vehicle headed north and then was seen on the Emerson Drive Trail sometime after 3 p.m. A little while later, that vehicle was seen in Wembley, and it was described completely accurate. It had a trailer. It was a very unique vehicle. And the person that contributed that information described it identical. So we knew it was out there at 4.30. I'm getting to the reason why we don't post suspicious activity. A little while later, a close friend of mine is driving into town and sees that same vehicle that was posted at 3 right at the intersection of 84th Ave and 100th Street. He sees it. He not only sees it, he takes a photo. It's at, it's at 5.30 p.m. That vehicle then headed north and escaped out of the city. And it was not caught that night. It actually, the police stopped pursuing it when it was out north um, of town. And it was doing 160 kilometers an hour down gravel roads. But here's the problem. When it drove north from 84th Avenue, through Grand Prairie, I estimate it drove through 500, 100, maybe even 2,000 members line of view and nobody noticed that their Facebook alert was happening and that they could have made a difference. If the police would have stopped that vehicle inside of Grand Prairie, if they would have got data that it's heading north, they could have been there sooner rather than up here past Claremont and they could have made the difference to return that farmer his truck back. As it was, 
if there was, I'm going to just say it this way, if there was 15 people in Wendy's and there was 20 people in Earl's or maybe it was double that and, and so forth, probably one in 10 was a Thefnet member and didn't even know that that was happening right beside them and that they could have stopped that vehicle because they tune it out. And we are doing our best to make sure content that goes to Thefnet is not something that's overwhelming and just gets tuned out. That's we think is our choice with what we've got to work with today. That was good, Darren. That's uh, 10 minutes, so we should probably wrap her up, eh? We should go back to the Light Catch uh, booster campaign, right? Hey, thank you. Uh, so please, if you haven't gone to www.bit.ly forward slash Light Catch, uh, we would really appreciate every member, every viewer's support, even just $25 could help get the free app and the free service out to the community in the next four weeks. Um, and, and make a tremendous difference over what we've had to work with today. So we hope everyone can enthusiastically support that. Uh, it won't go to us, it'll just go to the development of the app. And uh, we look forward to hearing any comments or questions or concerns and if it's, uh, if it's helpful, I look forward to doing this again real soon sometime. It's Darren. Our mission is to give every mobile phone user in the world the ability to stop crime. We're going to start right here in Grand Prairie. Thank you.